now we come to the paints. Watercolour pigments are vibrant in themselves, but so often that vibrancy is lost in the painting process. Rather than mixing your colours, try using the transparent nature of the watercolour to create the colours that you need. Let me show you using these mushrooms how overlaying two vibrant colours can create a much more interesting grey. Ultramarine blue is a great shadow colour. It's a warm blue, so already within it is a touch of red. Although it's a blue, it's got a touch of red within that blue, so anything you lay over the top is also going to pick up some of that red. If you think about it, greys are made from all the colours, all the primary colours together, red, blue and yellow. So if we overlay colours that include those three primaries, we automatically are going to get some form of a grey. I'm using the blue to pick out the shadows, to pick out the dark interior inside the mushroom, and just to pull out some of these little striations in the gills of the mushroom. And using the blue to define the shape of the stalk. Come around here, and this is where the light's catching the shadows forming on the left hand side. Shadow underneath the lip of the mushroom there. Other side of the stalk. If you have a problem defining your shadows, just light. Try, if you're inside, you can just light your subject a bit more. It really helps if you've got slightly stronger shadows to create a more interesting, vibrant watercolour. Don't be afraid to add lighting. Watercolour painting is all about light. Now let's take a thin solution of yellow ochre and lay that over the mushrooms where we want the grey colour and the highlit side of the mushroom, but not everywhere, because do you see where it's really catching the light? They're actually almost white. Obviously, for the colour not to run, you must make sure that the under, the under tint is completely dry. And if you're inside, why not use a hairdryer? It saves a lot of time if you're impatient, like I am. And you can let this tint spread across beyond the bounds of the mushroom and the shadow, because it also applies to the surface that we're on. It's an orangey surface that can have yellow ochre underneath it. And because the yellow ochre is a browny yellow and therefore has a touch of red in it and a touch of blue in it, when it overlays over the blue, it's going to start turning it to a grey. And inside, on the lit side, where these dark gills are, we can put a touch of this yellow ochre to go under the sepia. For the centre of these mushrooms, sepia is the perfect colour. And coming in under the rims, first of all, where the darkest colour is. And don't forget, you've got colour underneath, don't ignore it. So to make some of these lovely gill shapes, leave some of the colour out of the wash. Use the transparency of the watercolour. This is the whole, the whole beauty, the whole life of watercolour is its transparent nature. Sometimes you want solid colour, sometimes you want to use the opacity, but more than often it's actually the transparent nature of watercolour that makes painting sing. Don't forget brush strokes as well, look. Using the tip of the brush, quite a big brush, size 7 again, we can lay a nice big amount of paint and we can also lay nice detail. Come in under the rim. Oh, I love painting mushrooms. And where you've got those lovely broken edges, Remember your brush, don't kill them off by just coming down here with a hard edge of the brush. Use them. Pay attention to what's already on your paper. Remember, you're leaving the white paper to add life. You're using the brush stroke and now you've got these gorgeous, gorgeous transparent tints. Put 
take the colour off the brush a bit. Use the colour to shape the stem. And where that darkness is in the stem, I'm just going to bring it in a little bit just to make it less crisp edge. It's sort of striations down the... Oh. You need so little in watercolour to suggest so much. Let the brush do the work. Let the paint do the work. Let the paper do the work. I suppose the artist has some input. <laughs> Where you want a little bit darker for under the rims, while it's still wet, you can just plunge a bit of that sepia, much more neat, in while it's still wet, or even if it's dried, you can just plunge it in there, just to give it a little bit more dark under. It's lovely where it's run there. That's, I'm going to have to pull this one down a bit here. And now all we need to do is just bring them out from the surface that they're sitting on. One simple wash. For this one, I'm going to mix the yellow ochre and the blue together this time, but using it as a transparent wash. You do mix your pigments, but remember still to make them transparent. Now as they're mixed together, they have a sort of a greeny grey colour. We can use this to just slightly darken the area of the board around them. that we can tell that they're sitting on something. I used the same techniques of overlaying tints to paint the mushrooms in this painting and built up the vibrancy of the reds, yellows and greens of the other vegetables by overlaying their colours in exactly the same way. You can take this technique into the landscape Look at this pathway with its beautiful floral borders. Watch how it grows as I overlay successive tints. I'm going to start with some Indian yellow over every area that would have yellow underneath it. So the pathway is a pale, pale orange. I'm going to bring a pale, pale Indian yellow underneath it. Under everything that's green, I'm going to bring the Indian yellow. <laughs> The next tint is Prussian blue. And now a touch of cadmium red. Followed by a tint of alizarin crimson. Burnt sienna with a dash of yellow ochre. This is a mixture of burnt umber and Prussian blue. And finally I've strengthened the reds and to green up the foreground added a touch of aureolin and Prussian blue.